Hello everyone. In today's video, we are going to talk about how to build your own chat GPT clone with OpenAI plus Python plus Gradio step by step. Myself, Mohammad Zubair, and this channel is all about showing you how to become a highly paid IT pro really fast. So without any further ado, let's get started. Well, in this video, we'll see that how we can create our own chat GPT like website or you can say a platform because we have seen that chat GPT works in a conversational way and it keeps the track of what we have asked before and on the basis of those queries and responses, it responds to our latest queries. So we'll see how it works and what is the structure of chat GPT so that we can use that structure and we'll also see that what kind of model chat GPT uses so that we can understand it in a better way. But first of all, there is a thing that we need to know and that is what are the things we need to create a clone for the chat GPT. Well, things are very simple. We need Visual Studio Code or any IDE in which you want to have your code. Then you need two packages or libraries. First one is OpenAI and the second one is Gradio. And fortunately, both of them are available in Python programming language. So I'll do the same. I'll be using Python programming language to create my clone for the chat GPT. First thing first, from where can we get the API? Well, just head to your OpenAI account and from here click on your account and here it says view API keys. Just click on it and it will open a page like this in front of you. From here, just click on create new secret key. It will generate a new key for you. Here it is. Okay, there is one more thing that you need to understand and that is you have to copy this one and save it somewhere else because it only allows you to copy this key one time. You cannot copy it again. I'll just click on OK. And now you can see I do not have any way that I can follow to copy any of these keys. Yes, you can delete one of these from here. But for that purpose, you make sure to have at least one already available in your account. For example, as I have two of them available, I can delete one of them. For example, let's delete first one. I'll just remove this key. And now if I want to remove this one, I'll not be able to do so. It says you must generate a new API key in order to revoke your only remaining key. So make sure to follow these instructions. So we are done with copying the key or we are done with having the key for the API. Now let's head to documentation and let's understand how API work for OpenAI and how ChatGPT work. Well, just head to the documentation section on the OpenAI website and it will give you all the detailed information about the chat GPT. We are concerned with the prompt design. Here it is. If you scroll down, you will get to the section that says conversation. Well, it tells that how we will generate our prompt and how it will work. Well, first of all, we need to make sure that we tell our platform that this is an AI assistant that will work in a conversational way. And same has been written here as it says the following is a conversation with an AI assistant. After that, we have to define some of the characteristic for our prompt. And the characteristics are helpful, creative, clever, and then we have very friendly. You can change these characteristics. For example, you can go for friendly, funny, witty, angry, things like that. So these are some of the characteristics that we have given for this particular prompt. And down here, we have given a model that how it will work. For example, as it is in a conversational way, First one is human. It says, hello, how are you? And in the response, AI responds as, I am an AI created by OpenAI. How can I help you today? And again, human will respond. And in response to that, AI will give its answer. So this is how it works. Down here, if you scroll further, here it has been defined that what are the intents behind creating this API and what are the different ways that how it behaves. For example, it says, just like other prompts, we queue the API into what the example represents, but we also add another key detail. We give it explicit instruction on how to interact with the phrase. The assistance is helpful, creative, clever, and very friendly. So basically, this particular prompt has been trained on these traits. 
which are creative, clever, very friendly, etc. Then it says we give the API an identity and this is its identity. And down here it has some other information that is all related to this prompt and the API. So this was a bit of introduction about how this API and prompt work. And now it's time to open this particular prompt. So just click on this that says open in playground. It will open a new page for you. Well, I have already opened it like this one. Here it is. So I'll just close the previous one. Okay. Now from here, make sure to select the chat. If you just click on this drop down icon, you have different models that you can go for. We want to go for the chat one. So I'll just click on it. And here is the same one that we had in the documentation. So basically this is the identity and these are some traits and this is the model that have been given. Now we'll use this particular prompt in our Python to have the clone for chat GPT. How can we do that? Well, this is a very simple one. Just click on this view code button from here, select the code for the programming language as per your liking. You have option for Python, Node.js, curl json i'm going for python so i'll just click on it and after that i'll click on copy the code is copied and now it's time to open our visual studio code here it is and i have pasted the code that i have copied from the playground so basically what it is first of all it is importing os then it is importing open ai after that we also have to import gradio so i'll write here import gradio and we are good to go now after that, I'll go for as GR. Now, before you use this, you need to make sure that OpenAI and Gradio libraries or packages are installed in your system. How can we do that? Well, this is very simple. You know that we use pip to install different libraries. We'll do the same now. Just write pip install space OpenAI and it will install OpenAI package or library into your system. After you are done installing OpenAI, we can install Gradio as well. And fortunately, both of them are available for Python. So after doing both of these steps, you are good to go. I'll just remove this one. And now here, there is one more thing that we need to understand and we need to explain in here. And that is, here we need to have our OpenAI key. At the moment, it is in environmental variable format. But if you remember, we copied the key that was in string format. So we have to make sure that we use the code that can use the key in string format. So what I'll do here, I'll just remove this one from here and I'll use a string in here. I'll paste the API key that I copied from OpenAI. This was the key and we have successfully pasted it in here. After that, here we have start sequence in which AI will start. Then we have restart sequence. There we'll have a human. After that, what it is doing, it is composing the response as openai.completion.create and down here it is using the model and at the moment the model is text da vinci hyphen 003 what it is well for that purpose we'll go back once again to our playground this is our playground and if i just get out of this here if you see under the model text da vinci hyphen 003 is been used if i just click on this drop down arrow here you can see we have different models that are being used by gpt but a lot of people says that text Javinci 003 is like a chat GPT 3.0. So you can say anything to that. Okay, what it is, it says it is a most capable model in the GPT 3 series. It can perform any task the other GPT 3 models can, often with higher quality, longer output and better instruction following. And not only that, it can also process up to 4000 tokens per request. Okay, what are tokens you might be wanting? Well, as you can see here, we have different number of characters in each line. Whatever you ask your chat GPT, for example, if I write here, what is the name of president of USA? Well, these characters composed of some tokens and you get charged by the chat GPT in terms of the token. For example, you will be allowed to use some number of tokens per $0.02. So this is a kind of pricing and we'll talk about it later in some other video. But at the moment, I'm telling you what are tokens. So basically, the longer query you have and longer response you have from chat GPT, the more number of token will get used. And text DaVinci 003 can go up to 4000 tokens. 
and down here we have some other models that can be used for chat gpt but the most perfect one is the text davinci 003 and we are going to use the same one so i'll go back to my code here it is this is our model and this is our prompt which is the following is a conversation with the ai assistant this is the one that we are talking about then we have temperature and max tokens this is a temperature and this is the maximum length We'll talk about that one in the other video as well. After that, we have some other information in here like frequency penalty, presence penalty, and then it says stop, human, and AI as well. So this is the basic code. But as we know that we want to use it with the help of or along with Gradio, so we need to have the code for Gradio as well. So I'll just paste the code in here and I'll explain it to you. Okay, there is one more change that I have made and that is if you see, here it says prompt and this is the prompt and what I have done basically I have explained or you can say I have defined the prompt at the top and I have used its variable in here and after taking the response I have returned it and I have taken it into a text format. After that down here, here is my code that I have pasted for my Gradio. If I just scroll down, if you see here we are taking two things or you can say two parameters input and history. Input means what is the user giving as a query or input and what is the system or this chat GPT clone is maintaining as the history because you remember and you know that chat GPT works in a conversational way so that it has to keep the history so that it can maintain and keep all of the previous queries and so that it can respond on the basis of those histories as well. Down here it is saying that down here we are defining that if there is some history store it and define it and if there is not there will be an empty string and then we are adding it into a list and then we are appending it after that our input and history gets added into our open ai underscore create function which is this one and then it gets as a prompt and then that prompts gets used by the chat gpt and then it returns the output to the user here it is history gets appended in terms of input and the output and then that history gets returned to the function and this is how it all works and after that here we are going to use our gradio well with the help of gradio we have two ways that we can follow first one is interface and the second one is blogs well as we want to have the interface just like the chat gpt in which we get the input output history in terms of blogs that is why i want to go for the blogs i'll show it to you at the end as well so we are going to use blocks with our gradio and down here we are defining with blocks and then we have our block and here we have our message as build chat gpt clone with open ai and gradio you can also change it as it's a string then we have our chat board and then we have our message as text box and in that we have a placeholder as prompt and this is the prompt we are talking about so in case if the message or the text box is empty this will be shown to the user after that we are having a state so that our gradio can maintain the state of what have been done till now and after that we need a button in order to send the query to our chat gpt prompt after that we are getting the submit click button in which we are submitting the input and down here we are defining that upon clicking on this particular button first of all this function will get called that is chat gpt underscore clone and then an input will be there in which we'll have a message and state message will be here from the text box and it also need a state so that it can maintain and knows what have been done previously and for the output it will use two things first one is chat board and then the state well state we know obviously why it needs to have state as an output and then here we have a chat board the chat board will be coming from the chat board clone function so basically this was the function or you can say this was the logic behind this particular code. After that it will just launch this application upon clicking on this button. Okay now the question is how can we run that? Well first of all make sure to save this particular code. I'll just press ctrl s. Well you might be wondering now that how we can run this particular code. Well just go to your run option. Click on this drop down arrow and click on run python file. It will open a terminal for you. And the good thing is this application will run on a local server. It means you do not have to deploy anything. And this is the IP where it is running at the moment. Either you can just press your control key and you can click on it. It will open a prompt or you can say it will open a new tab in your browser or either you can copy this particular IP address and paste it into your browser. I'll just control and click on this one. Here it is. And this is how it looks like. And you can see here we have the same message in our prompt 
that we seen earlier in the playground. So now what we can do, we can directly start to use this particular chat GPT clone. How can we do that? Well, first of all, let's write here, please give me the code for adding two numbers in Python. After that, we just need to hit enter and let's see what do we get. Or you can click on this send button as well. Let's just click on it and here we have the response from the chat GPT clone that we have just created. So it has given us the response in the Python code. Okay, now let me open the code along with it. If you remember, here we have the list. This is the list in which we have our code or in which we have our input and output. After the list, we have history. So basically it is keeping all the history in here. Okay, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to just remove this one from here and now I'll write here, now give me the code for the subtraction. Let's hit enter. Not only it will return us the answer for this one, but it will also keep our history in here as well. And here you can see this is the code for subtraction. And along with that, we also have the history in here. So it has maintained the history successfully. And this is in a block format. And this was the same that we have used in here with our Gradio as blocks. Now let's ask something else that requires some explanation. So I'll write here, please explain the phenomena of gravity. And let's see how smart it is and up to how much extent it gives us the answer. So I'll just click on this send button and let's wait for it. And as you can see that it has defined the gravity phenomena in a very extensive way. So it means our chat GPT clone is working pretty fine and we are good to go. And down here you can see it says use via API and build with Gradio. Well that was all about this particular video and I hope now that you must have liked and learned a lot of new things by watching this particular video. If that is the case, please leave a like, subscribe and press the bell icon. I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Till the next video, take care.